What's up guys, Steven here and welcome back to a new video. So well, as you might have seen, my Truth About Bitcoin video is really exploding and it's heading to 1 million views. Big thanks for that, guys. And I did read the comments and I've seen that a lot of you guys are interested in getting an overview over all the different types of miners out there because most of the people still mix up all the types of miners and cryptocurrencies. And as you might know, I'm running a hardware shop for mining accessories and mining hardware. You can find the links down below. And I've got pretty much everything here. And today, in this video, I'll show you all different kinds of miners and also tell you something about the pros and cons. So I'd say, let's jump right in. So guys, before we have a closer look at the hardware, let me quickly explain what mining is all about. So mining is the process of securing transactions and committing them into the public blockchain. So this sounds really weird and I don't want to bore you with blockchain bullshit, but if you're interested in understanding the blockchain, I'll leave you some links down below in the description, which explain it very well. So let me give you my personal favorite explanation of what mining is. So just imagine you go to your local supermarket and you want to buy some food or anything else with your credit card. So you just go there to the checkout and then you basically pay with a credit card and then you go out. So there are some things in the background and this is the actual transaction and it's being processed by the MasterCard or Visa servers, which is somewhere in a hosting center. And also if you do a transaction on the blockchain with cryptocurrency, it also has to be processed somehow. And the miners are basically processing the transactions. The miners are not centralized in a hosting center from Visa or MasterCard. They can be in everyone's home. They can be in hosting centers and small companies. So they're all around the world and they are securing the transactions and yeah, they're keeping everything safe. Now mining is based on an algorithm and different cryptocurrencies have different algorithms. And that means you need to use different machines in order to mine them. And now we'll get started with the first category, which are ASIC miners. So guys, there we go. This thing here is an ASIC miner. And yeah, um, it's mining Bitcoins and it's doing that by approving transactions over the internet and it's getting rewarded, so getting paid in cryptocurrency and in this case, Bitcoin. This is an ASIC miner for Bitcoin only. It's from Canaan Creative. It's the Avalon miner A741. It's currently end of life. So the A821 is the latest model and it's just more efficient because um, yeah, um, they actually improve a lot. So every year, half a year, there's a new miner coming out or there are some improvements because it's getting harder and harder to create to mine Bitcoins. In the early days of Bitcoins, you could actually mine or generate Bitcoins with simple things like a CPU. I had friends who mined hundreds of Bitcoins with the $500 notebook. But nowadays, this is not possible because due to the difficulty factor. So difficulty basically tells you how hard it is to mine or generate Bitcoins. So Bitcoin is popular. That means more miners, more of those machines here are joining the network and the difficulty increases. That means it's getting harder and harder to be rewarded with Bitcoins, generate Bitcoins. Now, one of the questions people ask me the most is how expensive is such a miner and how much money is it generating me every month? So, well, it's really hard to say because um, with Bitcoin, it's, it really depends on how much you pay for electricity. So ASIC miners are simple to set up. You don't need to know anything about coding. There are easy tutorials. You set it up once and it's running. So actually you don't have to do maintenance on, on those systems, but they eat up a lot of electricity. Now that unit here eats up 1,200 watts. So it drains 1,200 watts from your power socket 24 seven, and it's outputting 7.5 terahashes. So there are calculators for each cryptocurrency where you put in the hash rate, the power consumption, how much you pay for the device, how much you pay for electricity, and then you can get a calculation how much um, yeah, you're getting back and what's your return on investment. So guys, let's talk about the pros and cons of ASIC miners. As the name ASIC suggests, so application specific integrated circuit, it's only made for one purpose, and this is mining a specific algorithm. This is an SHA-256 algorithm miner that means you can mine Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash. So basically everything that's based on that algorithm. 
There are ASIC miners for Litecoin, but with a Litecoin ASIC, you can't mine Bitcoin. So there are ASICs for, for specific algorithms. That's very important to know. All right, so um, because they're ASICs, they're very efficient at what they're doing. So they pay off quite fast. They are very efficient. For instance, if you compare this to the best graphics cards in the world, this is way faster in mining Bitcoin, but not in anything else. That means easy to use, so the setup is very simple. You don't have to do any maintenance and they pay off quite fast. So in the past, they were like money printing machines. Now, because of the weird market situation, the prices skyrocket and they're not that profitable anymore, but still they can earn you a good profit. Now for sure an AZ also has some cons. So um, as I've told you, it can only mine that one specific coin. So just think about the difficulty gets too high and it's not efficient anymore because there's like um, already the fourth generation of it out on the market. Then actually you can resell them only for a very low value because there is nothing else what the machines can do. They can just solve the algorithm, but if the difficulty is too high, these machines don't make any sense. But they get you a profit fast, but afterwards, if the difficulty is too high, they are not worth anything anymore. Also, they are really loud. So they um, consume a lot of power. That means they need to be cooled and the fans are usually very loud, up to 70 decibels. We are selling some kind of silencer kits here with um, plastic shrouds and here, as you can see, with some tubes. But um, they're still quite loud. You can put them into boxes, you can build your own silencers. Um, I know a bunch of people have them in the living rooms, but to be honest, I couldn't concentrate on any work with that machine next to me. So let me quickly show you how loud ASIC miners really are. So there we go. Also, ASIC miners are eating a lot of power. For instance, that ASIC miner here consumes 1200 watts, which is even more than an 8 or 9 or 13 GPU rig in some cases. So while well, they are being powered by server power supplies or special power supplies made for ASIC miners, as you can see, this is an HP server power supply here with a breakout board for the 6-pin connectors. Then there are um, special mining power supplies like this one here with a lot of six pin connectors, but also they're quite noisy. So that one here is very, very noisy and you really don't want to have that in your living room. So basically the miner itself is just stupid. It only has a few chips inside and it's being controlled by a so-called controller. The controller is actually in Raspberry Pi, as you can see, so that little thing here, but it's modified, as you can see, in a, in a nice case with a special software to control the miner. So actually it's, it's very simple. You hook it up to the internet, you configure all the details like pool or solar mining and yeah, you just fire it up and then you can start mining. Very simple setup, very easy to use, but power hungry, very loud and non-flexible and also kind of useless if the difficulty is too high to operate it with a profit. All right guys, so that's the situation with ASICs, but now let's talk about GPU mining. Well, as I've told you, it's actually possible to mine Bitcoins with your CPU, GPU or ASICs, but right now it only makes sense to mine with ASICs because the difficulty is so high and with GPUs you won't make a profit. Well, for sure, there are also other coins like Ethereum, which are based on a different algorithm, which is ASIC resistant. That means you can mine them with your GPU and make a very good profit. I have friends who have started um, in the beginning of 2017 to mine Ethereum and they made a lot of money and they are now buying GPUs in thousands of pieces, which is really, really sick. But they are not buying the average gamer GPU, so actually they're not driving up the GPU prices for retail cards, they are buying mining GPUs from China. So this one here is the Sapphire RX470. It's um, a mining edition, as you can see, there is no video output and you can only use it for mining. You cannot play games with it, you cannot use it in Crossfire, you cannot do video editing. So this GPU is only used to mine um, altcoins, which um, is not Bitcoin. So it's based on a different algorithm. So just quickly the pros and cons. 
So um, the pros, well, you can mine a bunch of different coins. There are over a thousand coins which you can mine with those cards. So anything which is not Bitcoin basically is possible. Then also, um, yeah, you're more flexible. There's like a GPU mining rig for every budget. Also, if you're on a tight budget, you can actually just buy one GPU, two GPUs and then upgrade from time to time. You have a way higher resale value. That means if you're using retail cards, then you can sell them afterwards when you're done mining and still make a profit on the hardware. On ASICs, it's kind of different because, um, you know, ASICs can only do that one thing and it's a little bit harder to sell them if they're kind of worthless. All right. so. With mining cards, for sure, if you buy mining cards, it's better than retail cards because they have usually better memory inside. You can overclock without a problem. And um, the cards we're using, so those Sapphire cards, are actually pretty good for mining. Also, GPU rigs are not that noisy like ASICs. So I've built GPU rigs even with 13 GPUs, but they were not that noisy like one single ASIC miner. So um, if you want to have a miner at home, a GPU rig is probably the best solution. For sure, a GPU rig has also some cons, like for instance, the hardware is harder to set up. You have to install Windows, you have to build a complete system, and also, um, those cards, they do not run really fast on stock settings, so you have to overclock them. On um, that card, for instance, you have to flash the BIOS, and it's kind of tricky. If you don't know what you're doing, you could break the card, you could set your house on fire. So it's not that plug and play like an ASIC miner. Also, GPU rigs are usually more expensive. So for instance, an A GPU rig with um, the cards here is around, I don't know, three to 4,000 euros. So more expensive than some of the ASIC miners. And usually also they have a lower return on investment. So you have to mine for a longer time in order to get the full money back. But this really depends on the market situation and the market right now is really crazy. So personally, I have GPU rigs at home and have ASIC miners at home. And I'll quickly show you right now some of my GPU rigs. So let's go. All right, guys, so it's a little bit loud in here because here we have our test setup. And as you can see, here we have two GPU rigs which are currently running and they are doing a burn in test. We are testing the power supplies with a Sun Moon load tester. And yeah, there you can see it. So this is an eight GPU rig, as you can see from Sapphire RX 470s. Um, yeah, motherboard, risers, adapters, huge power supply. Um, this is a 19 inch rig. Here we have the handlebars, three fans in the front. This is a different model we are working on. Also here, three fans, here two, and this is a six GPU rig with 1070s from MSI. As you can see, so it should actually be one of these cards. Here we have 1060s. Um, we're using that motherboard. It's the H110 Pro BTC Plus from ASRock. And yeah, bunch of power supplies right over here. So currently it's mining Ethereum and here with 6 GTX 1070 we are getting around 190 mega hashes per second which is actually pretty decent. Yeah, it's currently draining around 830 watts at around 190 mega hash per second. So this is already optimized, not 100% perfect but I think for 800 watts the performance is quite good. So yeah, we are testing all the rigs here in our server housing and here we are testing the power supplies with this load tester. Quite expensive equipment, but well, we just need to be sure that this is running 24-7 all the time. And yeah, there we go. That are our GPU mining rigs and we have to build a few more. All right, so we have covered huge ASIC miners, we have covered GPUs and GPU rigs, and then there are those so-called mini miners, uh, how I like to call them. So for instance, they are also ASIC miners because they have ASIC chips inside. Here we have an USB ASIC miner, it's a Bitcoin USB drive-sized miner. It's the Gecko Science 2-pack, which we also sell in our shop, and I made a review of it and it got like over 100k views, so people are really interested in, um, yeah, in the sticks. And there are two Bitcoin mining chips under that heatsink, and you can get up to 33 giga hashes per second. And it's really not a lot, you won't really earn money on a steady income, but it's like a lottery ticket, you know? 
Even though if you have a very small hashing power, there's always a chance that you could win a block. And a block right now at 12.5 bitcoins, so that's a lot of money. But for sure, the chance to actually mine a block with such a miner is very, very low. So it's basically a lottery ticket. And it's, it's fun to mine, it's not expensive. And if you want to get started and just check out mining, because you can actually also configure the whole software on it, just like on a big miner, then this is actually a nice thing to get started. Also, what I really like to use are end routers. So that are tiny Wi-Fi routers, as you can see. So that goes into your power socket. And here on this side, we have an Ethernet port. So you plug in your Ethernet connection and it's a Wi-Fi hotspot. And there's also a mining chip inside. So Linux is running on that unit here. You log in over Ethernet or Wi-Fi, and then you can just put in your mining pool settings or single mining settings, whatever you want, and start making money or use it as a lottery ticket. So actually, um, they don't really make a lot of sense because you don't really get a steady income, but it's like a lottery ticket, which doesn't drain a lot of power and is absolutely not noisy. Um, on the USB drive, um, Bitcoin miner on the two pack, I really recommend that you're using fans to cool them if you're overclocking them because I already broke some of them. So be really careful. And also you need to have a powered USB hub, just like this one here. Otherwise, maybe the um, USB drives won't boot. So it's a little bit tricky, but um, they're actually kind of fun to use. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so that are basically all the different miners you can find on the internet. For sure, there are tons of different brands. On ASICs, there are not so many brands, but on GPUs, there are a lot of brands. A lot of brands are coming now up with new motherboards, new power supplies. So 2018, if the whole crypto world will not crash, it will be huge. So stay tuned for more. If you're interested, you can find a link to our shop down below in the description. And I really hope that this video was kind of educational, helpful to you guys. If you have any questions, post them down below in the comments and I'll try to reply as soon as possible. So thanks for watching. I'm Steven from Tech Magnet and I'll catch you in the next one. Have a nice day.